Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel with myself Isabella. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, click that subscribe button so you never miss another video. My name is Isabella, I'm a graduate of the Vaganova Ballet Academy. I then went on to dance with the Mikhailovsky Ballet and Eiffel Ballet in Russia before I founded BWI. BWI is an online platform and I host intensives worldwide for vocational students and adult dancers. Welcome designed to help you with anything you are trying to achieve. From beginner to pro, we have classes, courses, plans and bespoke plans. BWI truly brings you everything you need. Start today. Today we're going to be talking about whether ballet is an art form or a sport. Now a lot of you may think well it's both and yes I think in the last 15 20 years it's very much been thought of as both and when we think of sport we think of physical things like oh it's very athletic and that's mostly what we mean by that in my opinion labeling ballet as a sport can be thought of even deeper than that because sport is very popular sport is very popular in the public eye as well and so bringing awareness to ballet being a sport as well brings more awareness to the art form itself it brings it more into the public eye more people can become aware of ballet and along with that bringing awareness to the fact that it is very athletic and it is very much a sport also brings awareness that actually it probably needs more attention it probably needs more funding it probably needs um, more awareness of it and more people should know about it more people should watch ballet and understand it and really relish in how amazing it actually is and it is very special because it isn't only a sport it's also an incredible art form as well when we think back to the olden days when dancers would just dance you know just train and dance and have these point shoes that were definitely not optimal and just grabbing anything they could because there wasn't that much option there wasn't that much variety in point shoes definitely not specially made shoes and yet they did some of the greatest things out there they really danced and did ballet for the literal art and where the lines can blur now especially is we're so focused on the technical side when we think about ballet as a sport it can blur the lines a little bit and we can get too focused on the technical things. You'll see dancers all over social media doing a hundred pirouettes, which is, you know, almost Guinness Book World Record worthy, you know, amazing things. But is the art form getting lost? Are we losing sight of what ballet is all about? Possibly. I think a lot of dancers these days, especially people who are you know legends of ballet such as and who are still around like Diana Vishneva she on numerous occasions and I've watched her on numerous occasions has mentioned how she's concerned for the younger generation and she's concerned with what's on social media and, and how much dancers are focusing on these tricks and these turns because ultimately it's not what's important it's not what ballet is all about it's not what has made these legends of ballet it's not what has kept it alive generation after generation because although yes it is a sport we don't want it to lose the art form and we don't want it just to become a sport because then what should we do ballet in the olympics is it just another sport like who can do so many turns on point is that what it will become we hope not we definitely don't want this now having said that with the sport idea circled around ballet, it has opened doors. It has made us understand injury prevention and how to recover from injury with 
the appropriate tools and with the right people around us. You know, people who are into sports science, we have this amazing um, facilities now. We have Pilates, we have floor bar, we have gyrotonics, with specific cardio cross training. Um, we even have TENS machines that train your muscles when you're not able to move yourself. We have really incredible things. I think that side of things is amazing because it allows us to reach our fullest potential with our bodies, especially with the demands on our bodies these days. We have more demands on our body than they did in the olden days. We have to do more extreme things, we have to do more neoclassical things, more daring and risk-taking things. And so keeping our body strong, healthy is really, really critical. And having the sports science side of things and all these layers of cross-training, um, and it's part of why I do my platform, all these things, we have at our fingertips allows us to get deeper into our potential. Now having said all this, when it comes down to it though, and when we watch these dancers on stage, are we drawn to the sportsmen? Are we drawn to the people who can do a million pirouettes? Or are we drawn to the artists that really make us feel something? For me, it's always going to stem back to that type of dancer. It goes beyond a dancer dancing artistically they have something different about them they have an intelligence about the way they move they look very mature and they just look like they've intelligently thought about everything every movement they do every step every nuance it's all thought about that's the difference between someone who's put on artistry afterwards someone who's focused solely on technique and often even those people who focus solely on technique, they lack a lot of nuance, they lack a lot of beautiful in-between steps. It really is just like they're, they're focused on the fourth preparation off we go and everything else and all the other layers to the variations say that they're doing is lost and we lose the character and we lose the nuance and it becomes super clear that that's the only thing they really care about. Whereas when we watch an artist, you know, these incredible artists such as in the olden days, you know, Maximova, um, Sizova, and um, Lepakina, Esilmaratova, they're not doing tricks, they're not doing insane, out of this world technical things, really, um, especially compared to these days. But what they are doing is really dancing, and they are really touching us with their artistry and their emotion. And that is what is the difference between a sport and an art form. Now, ballet is one of the most athletic things out there. It requires so much strength. It requires so much flexibility. It requires not just strength in one area, but strength in many areas. <laughs> the whole body, it is a whole body movement, which is why it's incredibly exhausting. It takes years and years and years of dedication and only a few make it, which makes it pretty cutthroat and extremely difficult. We have to train our bodies really, really well. We have to condition our bodies. Nowadays, it's not enough just to go to ballet class. It's not enough just to do the, the exercises within the ballet class. We have to practice outside the studio. We have to stretch. We have to condition the body. We have to make sure we've warmed up in order to allow us to eventually have freedom of movement and be able to really shine through with this artistic expression that we so that we have we need to be technically proficient and therefore we need to do sportsman type things and do our conditioning do our stretching and do all these extra things so that it helps us within the ballet class which will then help us in the choreography in the variation which will then allow us to be free on stage and really emote and so the two really go together now whilst this is not a video necessarily today on artistry without technical precision and having that technical freedom which we work on for years and years and years we'll never be able to be fully free and so that is the ultimate goal you know to be completely fully free free in our movements whilst we definitely have this amazing art form that we want to keep as an art form i don't want to lose that authenticity and we can't get lost in that we can't get lost in the the sportsman type way of thinking it can be helpful in so many ways for me what helped me really kind of master my technique uh, at school especially when i was really trying to get strong 
was two things. I started to really treat myself like an athlete, you know, not as a dancer who has Diet Coke and a cigarette, but really like an athlete. It goes beyond conditioning. It's how do I fuel myself? I want to fuel myself like an athlete. I want to eat like an athlete. I want to sleep like an athlete. I want to cross train like an athlete. I want to have knowledge like an athlete. I want to also speak to myself like an athlete, speak to myself with confidence and have that positive self-talk. And all that has led to what I'm doing today for you all, you know, providing you the best exercises to do, providing you the best conditioning to do, and my podcast, you know, providing you with the mental support and um, tools to help you succeed. Because so many of us hold ourselves back with how we speak to ourselves and how we're treating our bodies you know both in and out of the studio and so when we think about ballet as a sport it goes beyond just the the exercises that we do and I think it can be confused when we label it as a sport um, and it can be solely thought of of oh it's called a sport because it's athletic Yes, it is, but there's many other layers to it. It's a sport because there's so much mental preparation that has to go behind it, much like an athlete on an Olympic track. The amount of mental preparation they have goes beyond just doing exercises. You know, they have to mentally prepare. And I think this is a side of it that's only just starting to come to light. It's you know, the athletes have had constant support for years, having sports psychologists help them with their mental health. And I think only now in the past decade, like I would say no, no more than that really, have we really started to have help or realize that it's okay to have help, you know, which is why we have various podcasts out there, such as mine, A Dancer's Mindset, um, which at the moment is the most followed podcast um, for dancers, which is brilliant. Thank you so much. Definitely check it out. We also have, you know, um, qualified sports psychologists that, you know, people go to for literal therapy and beyond. And all these things are amazing. And it's this is what's also in the category of a sportsman. I think it's really great because it all makes us more emotionally aware, which is therefore, therefore gives us more qualities and opportunity to then go deeper within ourselves, which therefore makes us a better artist. Because the more we understand our own emotions and the more we're aware of them, the more we can channel them into our own work. Thinking of ballet as an art form and a sport, for me, there's many facets to it and many layers and treating myself like an athlete really is something that helped me massively. You know, before these intense Vaganova exams, before these intense performances, um, both at the Marinsky and um, in my companies, I would always have a real kind of very quite aggressive way of think, talking to myself like you know positive self-talk such as you know you can do this you've got this you've prepared for this trust yourself go out there and show them you know kind of thing because that's what really worked for me and along with that I knew that after ballet class I had my glycogen window so I only had a short period to get the carbohydrates back in my body otherwise I would get tired and depleted for the rest of the day. Then I'd um, follow that with a proper lunch and a protein shake. That kind of approach really allowed me to excel and keep going day in, day out with the same kind of level and if not get better and better. And I think that's really key. So just remember, although sport is means athletic for sure, what does that specifically mean? It's like, how do you look after yourself? How do you treat your body? How do you warm up how do you rehab from injury um, how do you cross train what's your lifestyle like you know all these things and then once you've sorted all that out you are then free Th those are habits those things become habitual the warm-up becomes habitual the way you eat sleep becomes habitual all these things become routine and then that allows you to fully focus on the ballet class because you are feeling optimally strong you are feeling at your best then you can focus on the ballet class and then you can focus on being your best self and therefore being able to express yourself because you're getting more and more trained in the body you're getting stronger and stronger you're getting more and more aware of how to utilize your body to its best my advice for you would be really educate yourself really learn 
learn how it is to look after yourself, learn how it is to have that specific routine that's going to help you and along with that really educate yourself on your favorite artists and dancers watch these old videos watch how they dance watch how they perform learn from their nuances watch how they express themselves and do all these beautiful nuances and really study things that are not always technical so when you know the the steps and when you've mastered the technical things in a variation then watch some of the greatest artists of all time look at how they move look at how they go from one movement to another look at how they turn direction look at how they express themselves because then you're improving all these things all the time and you'll really 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 see the results so i'd love to know what you think in the comments down below is ballet an art form or is it a sport let me know i would love to hear your thoughts and i've really tried to go into in depth and detail as to what i think it is it's definitely both um, but i would love to know exactly what your thoughts are on what those things specifically mean to you so let me know in the comments down below and i look forward to seeing you very soon and thank you so much for watching bye for now